As the world faces a dark hour, an unstoppable force threatens the very existence of humankind. The largest asteroid in history is on a collision course with Earth, poised to unleash unimaginable destruction and chaos. As the countdown to impact begins, governments unite to devise a desperate plan, a global lottery to determine the chosen few who will seek refuge in hidden underground bunkers, humanity's last hope for survival. In today's video, we will delve into the events of this thrilling movie. As always, at the end, we will evaluate the film and share some intriguing behind-the-scenes details and fun facts. The film opens with our protagonist, John Allen Garrity, a dedicated structural engineer meticulously examining blueprints for a new building. Tensions rise as he returns to his estranged wife, Allison, and their diabetic son, Nathan, who relies on an insulin pump to survive. The family struggles to maintain a facade of normalcy for Nathan's sake. The ominous comet Clark dominates the news, its impending flyby casting a shadow over the planet. The Garrities host a gathering with friends and neighbors congregating to witness Clark's passage through the atmosphere. As John ventures out for groceries, his phone receives a chilling presidential alert informing him that he, Allison, and Nathan have been chosen to seek refuge in a bunker. With military vehicles ominously rolling by, John races home to share the news with Allison, only to find their guests assembled. As they watch a fragment of Clark collide with the ocean, the ground shudders beneath their feet. John steps outside, only to be assaulted by a colossal shockwave. Panic takes hold as news breaks of the fragment's devastating impact on Florida, and the destructive shockwave sweeps across the land. The presidential alert echoes through the television, urging the Garrities to report to Robbins Air Force Base for safe passage to the bunkers. As John, Allison, and Nathan hastily gather their belongings, their neighbor Ed imparts a dire warning. Clark is not one but a cluster of destructive fragments, much like the one that obliterated Florida. As they flee, their neighbor Deborah desperately pleads for the Garrities to take her daughter Ellie, but with a heavy heart, John knows they must leave her behind as the girl would indeed be denied entry. With a final tearful goodbye, the family embarks on a harrowing journey into an uncertain future as the world crumbles around them. The Garrities approach the base but are delayed by heavy traffic, forcing them to leave their car. Regrettably, Nathan had taken his blanket and accidentally left his medication in the car. A large crowd has gathered, seeking access to the planes. Upon entering the base with wristbands, the family realizes they left their medication in the car when they can't find it in their bag. John returns to retrieve it, but when Allison informs a soldier about Nathan's medical condition, they are ushered to meet Major Breen. Breen informs Allison that individuals with medical conditions like diabetes are not permitted on the plane. Despite Allison's pleas, no exceptions can be made. Assuming John is already on the plane, Allison tries to contact him, but her efforts are unsuccessful. When John returns, he attempts to board a plane, believing Allison and Nathan are on another one. Another passenger, noticing John's medication, informs him about the policy regarding medical conditions. John requests to disembark just as a mob breaks through the gates and tries to storm the planes. Some intruders are armed and fire at the base personnel, causing one to drop a fuel pump. Recognizing the danger, John rallies everyone to evacuate as the fuel ignites. As the plane explodes, releasing further explosions and causing casualties, they race towards the gates. John manages to escape in time and returns to the car. Upon arrival, Allison and Nathan discover that the car has been broken into. Allison leaves a note for John, directing him to meet them at her father's house in Lexington, Kentucky. John locates the note and follows their lead. With Nathan in urgent need of medication, Allison takes him to a store that is being ransacked. Soon, armed assailants enter and shoot several people. Allison navigates to the front of the store where a man confronts her. Pleading for Nathan's life, the man ultimately allows them to leave. Allison encounters a woman named Judy and convinces her husband Ralph to drive them, but only as far as Knoxville, Tennessee. Meanwhile, John traverses the city, witnessing more looters and spotting additional Clark fragments in the sky. He pauses at a rooftop gathering to attempt a call to Allison. They manage a brief conversation before the connection is lost. During their conversation, Allison tells Ralph and Judy about her family's selection and their denied entry. 
Ralph seems to formulate a plan and abruptly stops the car to kidnap Allison. She struggles, but ultimately gives in, leaving her wristband behind as Ralph and Judy abduct Nathan. Heartbroken, Allison wanders aimlessly until a family in a minivan offers her a ride to the airport, having deduced that Ralph and Judy are headed there. Meanwhile, John comes across a truck full of people traveling to Canada. The driver agrees to drop him off in Lexington. On the journey, John meets a young man named Colin who shares information about planes in Canada flying to allegedly secret bunkers in Greenland. Another passenger, Lucas, becomes aggressive towards John, asserting that only American-born citizens should have been selected. Lucas and his friend Micah confront John, insisting that he hand over his wristband. The confrontation results in a truck crash and the tragic loss of Colin's life. John ultimately prevails over Lucas and Micah, forcibly striking Lucas's head with a hammer, then leaves the scene in shock. As the minivan carrying Allison gets caught in traffic en route to the airport, she decides to abandon the vehicle. Meanwhile, Ralph and Judy attempt to enter a base by passing Nathan off as their son using the wristbands. Nathan informs a soldier that he has been kidnapped, leading to the couple's detainment while Nathan is escorted away. He is taken to a medical camp just before Allison arrives. A soldier helps her search through tents until she is finally reunited with Nathan. The following morning, John enters a deserted neighborhood and breaks into a house for supplies. He watches a news report on global destruction and a catastrophic event predicted to wipe out 70% of plant and animal life, as well as more than 75 million people. He steals a car and drives to the residence of Allison's father, Dale. Eventually, Allison calls the house for a ride, and John picks her up along with Nathan. Dale notices lingering tension between John and Allison, a result of John's past infidelity during a difficult period in their marriage. John expresses remorse for his actions. As the family watches the news and confronts their probable fate, John remembers Colin's information about the planes heading to Greenland and decides to try reaching them. They invite Dale to join them, but he chooses to stay home and accept his imminent death. The Garrity family leaves in Dale's truck, bound for Canada. While in upstate New York, they hear a radio report about incoming molten debris. Fireballs start raining down on vehicles and people. John directs Allison and Nathan to take cover under an overpass, even helping a man trapped in his car find safety amidst the chaos. Once things settle, the family resumes their journey and reaches the runway just as a plane begins to take off. John blocks the plane with his truck, forcing the pilot to confront him. Though the pilot insists the plane is entire, John implores him to take only Nathan and Allison. However, Allison persuades the pilot to let all three of them on board. As the plane arrives in Greenland, another fragment strikes the coast, causing a shockwave that leads to the plane crashing. Both pilots die, but the primary pilot indicates to John that another plane is landing nearby, hinting the bunkers are close. John guides his family and the other passengers to the airbase, where they are led underground just before the last of Clark hits. The Garrities embrace as they feel the impact. Nine months later, stations worldwide, including Sydney, New Delhi, and Paris, establish contact with Greenland. As the atmosphere clears of radiation, the survivors emerge into the remnants of the world. The Garrities join in the celebration, marveling at the sight of birds flying overhead. Visually, the film is nothing short of stunning, showcasing impressive special effects that make the catastrophic events feel both realistic and immersive. Additionally, the cast delivers powerful performances, with Gerard Butler standing out in his portrayal of a father determined to protect his family at all costs. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give Greenland a solid 8.5. This rating reflects its captivating plot, strong acting, and visually striking special effects, all of which contribute to a memorable and thrilling movie experience. While there might be minor imperfections, as is the case with any film, Greenland undoubtedly stands out as a well-executed disaster movie that is absolutely worth a watch.